Uh, Short Box Nation. I am sitting here with uh, Stephen or Steve J. Palmer, the yes. voice of Bill Williamson in both Red Dead Redemption games. That's right. Steve, welcome to Collective Con. How are you enjoying yourself, man? I'm doing. I feel like I this. I just swear it's like I'm about to lick a clown's nose. Like. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's right. a, Sorry, no, I just I had no, to do that. Favorite. I had to do that. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Is this your first time down here in Jacksonville, Florida? Or Florida? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, anyone that doesn't know, uh, even though I'm originally, I was born in upstate New York. Word. Uh, my dad moved my entire family uh, in the late 70s to uh, Daytona Beach. Hmm. Uh, I grew up in Daytona Beach, Florida, and... Uh, and uh, I went to Seabreeze High School there, graduated in the 90s. I went to Daytona State College, and eventually I moved out of Florida. Uh, then, and then after college, came back and whatnot, back and forth. Uh, but my family lives in St. Augustine, and they were here earlier for my 10 o'clock panel with Patty Hawkins. Cool. Um, but, yeah, my sister went to University of North Florida, and I'm very familiar with the area. So I've got family between Jacksonville and Daytona. And I'm 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 a Florida native, so yeah, it's uh, this is home to me. This is, uh, is and I'm having a great time, fellow Floridian. Yeah, Steve, does it ever? Are you ever taken back, or is it? There's still that sense of like wonderment, knowing that you can have you can set up a table here at a convention based on just doing voicing for a video game. Did you ever expect the franchise to be as big as it is? Well, here's here's the thing. I I never. Uh, uh, this is a blessing. The the Red Dead franchise working with Rockstar Games has been absolutely nothing but a blessing in my life. They're a fantastic company to work for, and I'm I'm honored to be be able to be here and and be part of this. Any convention I do uh, anywhere uh, is a blessing. As far as the size and scope of what the, the Red Dead story has become, I. You, you really don't know until it happens. Yeah. We know that working on uh, both games, but especially uh, in the last several years, working in secret on Red Dead Redemption 2, we knew we were working on something incredibly hmm. special, something so unique. Uh, and and, and we, it helped us be able to keep our NDAs and keep our silence about it cool. because we know it's like we, we, we're not going to pop a ribbon on this box or open the present until, uh, until it's it's the perfect time. And and as I've said this before in other panels and whatnot, Rockstar Games will not release a product until it's 100% pristine. And they've done that every time. Uh, again, we knew it was something special, but to really finally see it out, loud, uh, out and about uh, the final product and be able to be just among like the fans to have a copy and put it in your console and have everything start up mm. and see what the the fruit of all your labor labor that for so many years there there was no words you, it was just like mouths agape and just like ah <laughs> oh, and you're texting other cast members yeah. going oh my god look what we did i think pristine is just one of the many accolades that yeah. you could give uh this franchise i mean just the popularity and the fandom is so yeah. impressive i mean I imagine it's got to be humbling to have you know a line of people just wanting to shake your hands like like just happened prior to us. Yeah, no, we, I have I've had people just coming up and ask me questions and and not necessarily so much about you know you're going to get obviously a bunch of Red Dead questions and mm -hmm. bo about both games and uh, you know were you a fan of Undead Nightmare and the answer is oh yes yes and yes you're a fan of all the products uh, but just gamers in general because I you know most of the cast are gamers as well we talk about other games we play and other things we're huge fans of hmm. and so it's it's a big wonderful uh, community regarding this new medium entertainment that's really taken off in the last five six years and is just growing every year every so it's just growing so so big and the technology is improving who knows the kind of conversations you're going to have with an actor in a video game in, in four to five years it's yeah. going to be mind-boggling um but to go back to what you were saying you were asking me what it was like you know lending a voice to a game and i would answer that with i have no idea because what we did we simply didn't lend our voice uh, a lot of people and i've in talking today there seems to be a big misconception as far as what we did and that's okay because when you work in secret can't no one no one knows how the magic thing is made but what we did uh and we did this on both games was full-on performance capture hmm. and in layman's terms anyone watching or listening who doesn't understand what that is the best way exp uh, to explain it is uh well 
imagine what Andy Serkis did in Planet of the Apes. Look what he did in the new Star Wars as uh, as Snoke, or look what he did as Gollum in, in Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. We had full head to toe uh, the perform what we call the Velcro pajamas. Huh. Uh, with the with the balls on them, and we were in a studio. We were blocking out scenes, memorizing dialogue as if we were doing a three act play. We would have scenes and pages of dialogue we had to memorize. We had blocking. We were making eye contact. We were all in the studio together. So when you're playing, uh, when you're playing either game, and you see Dutch Vanderlyn having a scene with John Marston. You see me talking to John, or you see Arthur talking to Mary Beth at camp, or Abigail having a scene with Micah. Those are all the respective actors. That's uh, Peter Bloomquist. That's Callie Elizabeth Moore. That's myself. That's Benjamin Byron Davis. That's Roger Clark. We're all doing scenes together. Uh, it's basically you're doing theater in the round in Velcro pajamas. Wow. So we 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 lend everything, and in, in, you know, including sound. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. Sam, we'll have a photo op in the photo Sam J. Jones. Yes, the man. See, he's a, he's a guy that's not ashamed to put the J in the middle name. <laughs> so that's two of us with the J. I don't know anyone else, but me and Flash Gordon are not ashamed of the J. Boom. So it, it sounds like, aside from putting... Yeah. Your your voice in the uh, in the games is also literally your body. It's you know, all your body. It, here's the thing, uh, and 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 anything I'm saying is 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 certainly it, it's uh, uh, not a stab at voice acting because that itself is a very hmm. integral yeah. skill that involves uh, being close to the mic, enunciating. Uh, energy and, and and that's a skill because that work is great I, as an actor I'd like that work as well but to just explain as far as the what we what we did with this particular uh, project uh, it, it is full on it is full on acting and even though that a lot of there's wonderful video games out there that is just booth work and that doesn't take anything away because those are games I love and I'm just as psyched as everyone else to play them I feel that because where you're going to see the, the the medium of gaming in four or five years you're going to have more of what Rockstar Games has done and that's full on performance capture uh uh, involving uh, actors and uh, and and interacting uh, with whether it, it's animals and stuff. That's like everything is is performance captured, and I think that's where we're headed. Uh, and I think that Rockstar has taken several leaps ahead, but that's not to say uh, everyone else is going to catch up. So it, this could be this could be the new way of entertainment in just a handful of years. I want to hear about the the differences that you saw from working on the first game into the second? Because, I mean, when the first one came out, it was definitely praised really well. I mean, you could tell yeah. this was just something special. But I think it, it's safe to say that, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2, when that dropped, it was just the praise, the fandom. It just seemed like it exponentially increased. I mean, Well, as far as, far as uh, exponentially increasing as far as quality with the graphics and the yep. technology... I can't go into that as far as the 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 secrets of the magic oh, of Rockstar, no, 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 no. Uh, nor would I. But I was talking about the, the process. Well, I, what I will well, say about this, um, it, it's one of those things where the the group of us that were returning, and and as far as like the main you know Dutch Vanderlyn gang that came back, myself, Benjamin uh, Byron Davis as Dutch, and Rob Weedoff as John Marston. We had a source of reference, of course, to to look back because we you only saw so much of their characters uh, in Red Dead. Uh, we call Red Dead. We just say Red Dead One now, or just mm -hmm. Red Dead. You 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 know where they end up, but everyone's question before anyone knew there would be a Red Dead Redemption Two or a prequel or what have you is like I would love to see how they got to that point, hmm. and. Uh, and, and other people who uh, actors brought in, like Roger, uh, uh, Kylie Vernoff, who played Susan Grimshaw, uh, Peter Bloomquist, who plays Micah Bell, and what have you, the, an, an amazing cast of other uh, characters, uh, amazing actors. You In doing a prequel, it's like you, you, you almost... You, you can get a reference of the first game, and some of them would go, either play or yeah. look on YouTube at clips, but you're, you're telling a whole new narrative. And it can be this, the jumping off or starting off point of a new fan. Um, so I knew going in, I guess it, 
get back to the egg and answering your question. As a, as an ensemble, as a cast, going into it, we knew that we were going to tell an amazing story. Comparatively, me as with Red Dead One, I was totally blind. I didn't even know what the name of the game was. You know, when we worked on the first one ten years ago, wow. it was just like it's a Western video game. Okay, and I'm playing this guy, and you would learn as things were pieced together. I was one of three people uh, in the gang with a unique history of where things were going to go. So my perspective would be slightly different, but we didn't know how the we knew where we were going to end up, but we didn't know how we were going to get there. So our main thing is we were uh, we were getting there together to tell a great narrative, a great story, and work with amazing writers that were going to tell uh, really delve into uh, amazing characters. Awesome. And it's a it, it's not the most joyous story. It can be very painful. And and if you're fans, if you're playing, what I gave any way, it can be it, it it can it gets you right in the heart. Mm. But that's I guess that's the amazing thing about it um, is that what what was different between the two is I understood, and and, and I think uh, Benjamin and Rob would say the same thing. We had that unique perspective as we we understood the scope of the story of what could be told. And we know everything was going to be amplified by 10 or 20 or 30 or even more so. Um, but the big unknown was, was like, well, how intense is this going to be? How deep into these characters are we going to get? What things are we going to uh, learn that we didn't know before? Um, and then we had no idea when we were going to wrap up. So it's this, we're, we're creating this thing no one knows about. I mean, there was speculation on the Internet. No huh. one knew. And we only had each other to share. So the difference, wow. the, the weight of the secret was a huge factor uh, to compare the two. But uh, uh, the one thing that remained was that we were serving a story. We were serving a narrative we were honored to be a part of. That's awesome. And uh, it, it's, it, it's, been, it's, been, it's been amazing. So do you have a, you know, speaking about how, how intense uh, the, the story can get uh, for, for both parts yeah. of the game, is there a certain scene or, or part of the game that had, that was a little maybe more emotionally uh, draining or you really had to like get involved or, or just thinking like, ooh, this one is kind of deep. There was, like a specific no, there, there was one, there is, uh, there is a, uh, there is a campfire monologue that uh, and uh, most of the characters, when you play, especially on trap, uh, chapters two and three, you can trigger uh, conversations or scenes around the campfire that will that will tell you more about the members of your family, the members of the gang. And there was one in particular where uh, it was a very heavy emotional monologue uh, for Bill, hmm. and it's Bill talking about how he met Dutch. That was one of the, uh, I had to pull within, but it, it's something that was, that hit on a nerve for me when I was, when I was reading over the monologue over and over, uh, had it memorized, but I was, I was, I was breaking it down into beats is like how I was going to do it. And, uh, I don't want to ever discover my process of what came to that moment, what triggered in me. And that, that as an actor, that's gotta be my own personal thing. Yeah. But I got very overwhelmed in that moment hmm. and, and it, I, I felt like I was going to do something very unique. And I remember going over to the deck director, Rod edge. And, uh, we had talked about, we hadn't shot anything. We were going to do a, a take. And I remember going up to him and he's like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to try something different. Uh, do you mind? I go, and I, I remember I, I'm going to try something different. Do you trust me? <laughs> and he looked at me right in the face and goes, no, but do it anyway. And I, I, I kind of went, everything became white noise, uh, and I did it. And it ended up, we did it in one take. And they said, that's it. Wow. And that's what's in the game. And that was, uh, that was one of the most... Emotionally draining, but blurry. I just explained it's like white noise. It was just like a flash, and wow. it just came out. But I think I was able to pull that out because something that I, you know, Bill Williams, everyone's character lives within them, and Bill is very 
complex. He is, he is, uh, internally, he's very uh, insecure. He's more frightened of things going on than a lot of characters. And, and I think that he's a lot, he has a lot to say, but he doesn't know how to express himself properly. And in that scene where he expresses himself in the most purest manner, and uh, it, it was just something that the, I remember that day was, uh, uh, I, I was very proud of what I, I gave to that character. And I think I served the narrative, the, the, narrati- the narrative, excuse me, of, of the story we're trying to tell. And as an actor, that's all I can do. I step away wow. and then everyone else adds their pieces. And then at some point, the, the story you're telling will live on its own. But I remember that day in particular was was one of those times where, uh, you know. No, thank you for sharing that. Was, yeah. that was, so you brought up about, you know, uh, speaking about the interactive um, nature of the game, you know, being able to do certain things to trigger certain responses. Yeah. Is there, do you have a favorite, like, interactive moment or element of the game? You know, some people just enjoy taking their horse for a ride, you know, yeah. taking them down to the watering hole. Do you have a favorite just... Whether it's mundane to some, but just a favorite interactive element of the game. Uh, the first, the original game, I could go, I could go several hours. I could set up just like, well, it's two p.m. Uh, I'm going to hang out with a friend, go see a movie at seven p.m. So I'll stop playing at six p.m. Yeah. So for those four hours, I'm I'm going to uh, uh, put the game in the console and I'm going to play Liar's Dice. <laughs> Forever. First game is like I I never got bored of Liar's Dice. Cool. I, and the little conversations of people, you know, you're playing a game of Liar's Dice uh, in in uh, at one place uh, in Thieves Landing is different than playing it in Escalera. Uh, and so I I loved Liar's Dice. I could not get enough. The um, in in the new game Red Dead Two, I love I love the fishing aspect. I absolutely adore. Now. Do I get, uh, I don't get bored of it. There are times like I'm going around the swamps. I'm like, I'm uh, around San Denis. And sometimes you go in the swamp where the water is shallower or you go up north where the salmon is. Yeah. And the water's not that deep. So you're like, if fishing's going to take too much, but I want fish. So I just get the bow and arrow out and I'm just like shooting them. It's like, <laughs> do I need more salmon? Yeah, because they're right there. They're in like, so many inches of water and they're like sticking out of the water and you're just shooting them and i uh i love that going fishing with the bow and arrow i could do that for hours and it's like oh i got a lot of fish um uh but yeah that's that's one of those things so i would say fishing in the new one and then the original game liar's dice i could do that for hours avoid any type of uh main missions and i'd be happy that, no, that's, that's uh, awesome. yeah <laughs> what's your favorite console to play What's that? Favorite console. I had, I, I had a, a fan uh, um, send me a question. Oh, uh, wow. What's your favorite okay. Console? Uh, I was a PS3 guy. Oh, yeah. Come on. And, Some classics on there. And getting ready for when the game came out in October of, of 2018, uh, I, got a new con- uh, I got a new console. I ended up getting the Xbox One X. Nice. Because I wanted the backwards uh, compatibility to play Red Dead 1 again. Hmm. And with the 4K resolution, Ooh. I it's so I play it so crystal clear. Um, I I personally enjoy right now the Xbox One X, nice. but I had the I had the PS3 right before. So I've switched. I've gone from Xbox, uh, PlayStation to back to Xbox. Um, my next one uh, could be a, a PlayStation. I don't know. Or there's some people that just buy one of each, yep. so they avoid any controversy. <laughs> but I know I. I'm an Xbox guy for now. For now, I'm not Ooh. saying choose one over the other. It just, that's just the one I happen to pick yeah. for this uh, this round. Well, Steve, you got a line building up, so I don't want to take up more of your time. No, but no, that's fine. Man, that's fine. Can you? But tell- there's a line. That's good. Lines are good. <laughs> can you tell us about what you've got, uh, what you're working on now? And then I know that we we talked about you've got some other conventions lined up. Too. Yeah. Uh, I've got some. Uh, uh, friends are working on some uh, theater projects right now. They cool. like me involved in it. And one of the things I wanted to do uh, is get more involved in live performance. So uh, we've got some stuff with that coming up shortly. I would say that I've got a slew of conventions coming up uh, for the fans here in Florida. Want to know, will I be at MegaCon? I will not be at MegaCon this year, but Alex McKenna, 
uh, Roger Clark and Rob Weedoff will be. Uh, but at that weekend, I'll be back in California, in Ontario, California, for Comic-Con Revolution. And that's going to be the uh, 17th, 18th, and 19th of May. Uh, after that, the weekend uh, of June 7th, 8th, and 9th is Sacramento Anime, Sac Anime, which is going to be the next big convention where it has the main cast. There's going to be eight of us at Sac Anime, so we're really excited about that. And then the weekend of 4th of July, I will be back in the state of Florida. I'll be all the way down at the other end of the state oh, super cool. uh, at Florida Supercon nice. in Miami. So I want to get there back. early. Uh, with some other uh, 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 actor friends of mine that want to see the fireworks, and then you can come see me in Miami oh, in just a few months. Guys. All right, Steve, do you want to give a shout out to your uh, social media handles? Yes, uh, both Instagram and Twitter are Steve underscore J underscore Palmer. And uh, if fans just come and follow me, and uh, we have a lot of fun on social media. I pack, uh, I, I uh, post uh, awesome pics, uh, fun anecdotes, things like that. And uh, I just actually, I just posted a pic. Uh, there's you know a lot of great Red Dead cosplay. I've oh, seen yeah. uh, I've seen Duchess, I've seen Sadies, I've seen Johns, I've seen Arthur's. But today, and I just posted it before this interview. I got my first Josiah Trelawney, and I don't think anyone see this. So. He, he's on to Instagram now. It was it was so fun seeing that, and I'm just enjoying all the cosplay. And I love the fans; they're so uh, considerate, and they're so kind. And we're just have we're having fun here. And we're just going to continue to have fun. And I think the same thing could be said for you too, man. Thank you so much for giving yeah, me pleasure. the pleasure. And listen, Steve. happy Easter to you, oh, man. Same to you. All, all right, right, folks. Thank you. Guys. Uh, follow Steve. Check him out, and uh, we'll catch you guys soon. All right.